What's up, Kyle Gang? All right, so today we got this pretty crazy statics problem. So our goal is to find the moment of inertia around this x prime axis, which is the centroid of this figure. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So what we want to do is we have this pretty complex shape, right? And what we want to do when we have a complex shape is break it up into simple shapes that we know how to do. So let's find some simple shapes in here. So I think our first simple shape is going to be this entire rectangle. So we can say that if we made this an entire rectangle, uh, let me draw it out. If we looked at the thing without the cuts on the side, it would be right 200 meters, 200 millimeters wide, and then it would be some amount tall. And then our next shapes maybe could be these circles. So these are circles that are cut out. So if we take a line there, we can say that we have a circle that looks somewhat like this, right? So it's here. We know that the radius, basically, from here to any point is, um, or from out here, I guess. So if this is the radius, we know that this radius is uh, 200 millimeters. So now we need to find, actually, to find the, the heights of these shapes. So to do that, we're going to use, um, we're going to use sine and cosine, right? So we can go ahead and make a triangle out of this. So yeah, let's let me make a separate triangle. So we're going to look at this, this quarter circle here, or this, yeah. So we know that this is 45 degrees, right? 45 degrees, and then this is 200. So we want to find the height, right? So this height is going to be uh, sine of, so it's going to be 200. Let me uh, put an arrow here. That's 200 sine of 45, right? 200 sine of 45 gives you the height, and then the base is going to be 200 cosine of 45. So we're actually going to find that that height is equal to 141 millimeters, and that this base is also 141. Nice. So let's go ahead and label out here. So on this height, let's let's find the height of this total rectangle. So it's 25 tall here, 141 millimeters, another 141 millimeters, and then another 25 millimeters. So it's going to be 25 plus 25 plus 141 plus 141. That height is going to be 333 millimeters. So then we have our shape here. So let's find everything else about this. So this distance we know is 141. And then this height is 141. So its total height is going to be, you know, what that times two. So it's going to be 282. Uh, so we'll get to that when it comes around later. So now we have these defined shapes, and it's just about finding the moment of inertia now. So what's the moment of inertia, right? Uh, let me get my marker. Here it is. So the moment of inertia, the equation for this is I around x prime, we're doing around x prime, is going to be I bar of x prime plus area of the shape times distance in the x squared, or distance in the y squared. Because we're doing with respect to x, right, we're doing with respect to a line that's x, we need to do distance in the y squared. So let's break down this formula. So this is the inertia we're looking for, and then this inertia is going to come from a formula. So if you look in the back of your textbook or Google inertia for common shapes, you're going to find it for different kinds of shapes. Uh, yeah. So let's let's do it for the rectangle first, and then area of area and the distance in y is the area from or distance from the center of the axis. So let's do it for the rectangle. So i x prime rectangle is equal to. So if we're doing it for the rectangle. Uh, so I x bar, if you look in the back of the book or whatever, it's going to be 1 over 12 uh, base height to the third is what that is going to equate to. And then this next part is going to be area. So area is base times height and the distance in the y squared. So let's find distance in the y squared first. So we're looking for distance in the y. So we're looking for distance away from the centroid. So the centroid is going to be at the center of this. And then distance in the y is distance to the centroid of the shape. So if the centroid line lies on the centroid of the shape, distance is going to be zero. So if this is zero, then this entire thing becomes zero. And we're just left with this part. So let's plug in our numbers. 1 over 12, the base is 200. The height is 333 cubed. Right? So you're going to get that i of x of the rectangle. I'm going to leave it up here. I'm going to label it REC. It's going to be 614 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the sixth, or millimeters cubed, fourth, millimeters to the fourth. All right, so we found that for the rectangle, so good. Let's get rid of all this. So if we're going to use that formula again, the thing is, it's hard to find 
this shape because this is not only just part of a circle it's like a really weirdly cut out part of a circle so there's not really a formula in the back of the book that you can find maybe if you search really deep on google someone has found this question before but you know let's say maybe that's something your teacher want to give you on a test or something that you're not going to find on the fe exam so let's try to find it another way so the other way is using the the, the law basically because we know it lies on the centroid, right? The centroid of this shape with respect to the x-axis, or with respect to x-axis, is gonna be on the line, so we don't have to worry about that. So we can just use the formula, i of, um, let's see, i of x prime is the integral over the area y squared dA. So I've done, done a lot of these problems on my channel. Uh, this is like the, the calculus version. This is the one they teach you earlier before you get to the, that, the next rule that we were using on the rectangle. So now we have to figure out this. So now we have to find out the area of this and uh, figure out what that becomes, right? Okay, so to explain this next part to you guys, I went ahead and drew a bigger picture, and so I'm just gonna try to explain it. So we're doing this uh, question. So we wanna get rid of dA. We wanna replace it with something. So let's replace it with dy. So the dA is equal to x dy, right? So this is an equation, but we need to make sure that we have our x correct. This is assuming that we're doing all of the area, but we're not. We're just trying to find this area. So if we have this axis here, x and y, I went ahead and just drew it like this. Um, x is how far, you know, how much area we're doing, and y is that. So if we just do x from the y-axis, right, we're doing x dy, so we're coming off the y-axis, we're gonna find all of this area, right? This is x. We don't want that, we want this area. We want this, right? So what we have to do is subtract whatever this total distance is, which this total distance is defined by an equation of the circle, right? There's an equation of the circle. And what is that equation of the circle, right? So an equation for a circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to radius squared. So we know the radius is 200, and we don't know x and y, so x squared plus y squared is equal to 200 squared. So we have this, this is really convenient. So this line is defined by uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 200. So we want our distance a. A is what we're looking for. So if we subtract whatever the distance is, right, which is defined by this, right, we're looking for x. So if we rearrange this, we get x squared is equal to 200 squared minus y squared. Take the square root, you get x is equal to the square root of 200 squared minus y squared. So this line here, it's in terms of x, is defined by x is equal to the square root of 200 squared minus y squared. That's how this is defined. So if we take the distance, which is this, and subtract x, we're going to get area. So we have to take this and subtract whatever this distance is, but we know what x is 141. That's the radius, or that's the, uh, that's the number we found earlier. So literally, dA, the change of area, is going to become, uh, so it's going to become our total distance, which is the distance from the y-axis to wherever we are on the circle. So it's gonna be square root of 200 squared minus y squared. And then we're gonna to have to subtract whatever distance we don't want, which is this 141. So minus 141. And then of course the dy. So finally we have something we can plug in here. So let's just go ahead and plug that in. So i of x prime of the circle thing is equal to integral of y squared square root 200 squared minus y squared minus 141 dy. And so our bounds for dy, where does y go from? So this goes from negative 100, right? We know that this height is 141 and this height is 141. So it goes from negative 141 to positive 141. So finally, we have an integral here that we can actually solve. Uh, but this integral is pretty crazy and I actually don't know how to solve this integral. So we're engineers, we now have to plug this into a calculator. So if you plug this integral into your calculator, you get that i x prime circle is equal to 482 times 10 to the fifth millimeters to the fourth. Right, so that crazy integral solves out to that. So if we wanna find, uh, so let me just go ahead and erase this now. If we want to go ahead and find our total inertia around the x-axis, we have to take 
the whole rectangle, right? We found this big rectangle, it's inertia, and then we need to subtract the inertia we found from these little half circle things, right? And there's two of them, and they're symmetrical across this axis, so we can just do two of them instead of doing one, right? So it's gonna be I x prime is equal to I x prime rectangle minus two times I x prime circle, right? That's our equation there. So we have these two numbers. So if you plug those two numbers in, you find that I x prime is equal to 520 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. That's your final answer. So it's a pretty crazy problem, huh? I mean, this is probably one of the hardest problems I've solved on my channel. Because uh, you have to crazy, this crazy integral. If you know how to solve this, cool. Uh, I'm proud of you. I think it's a trick, so. Or you can do polar coordinates. Either one works, I'm pretty sure. So whatever you're into, you know. But uh, I don't feel like it's worth solving on my channel because this is more about statics. So this is just how you set up this integral. So yeah, if you have any questions, uh, ask them in the comments. Uh, check out the rest of my videos for more problems like this. And I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.